Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing really well on the run up to Christmas and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here then I am Becca, I'm a professional pet portrait and wildlife artist specialising in realistic coloured pencil drawings of animals. So we've been working on this robin over the past couple of weeks, um, so all that's left for us to do in part 7, which is the final part, is to just finish off this tail feather. Um, now hopefully it shouldn't take us too long because like I said in the previous part, it is very much out of focus. So we're going to be using some of the same techniques that we use here, which is very much sort of blending focused rather than detail focused. And yeah, we'll just get the last little bit finished and then you should have a complete robin drawing um, completed and ready for Christmas. So you can use it as a little Christmas gift or frame it or do whatever you want to do with it. Um, I know a lot of you have gone ahead and finished it before I've actually finished this tutorial. Um, and you've, I saw someone added a little bit of holly. So instead of using the branch, they incorporated holly and like made it look a bit more Christmassy, which I thought looked really, really nice. So yeah, keep tagging me in all of your posts and all your works in progress because I literally love seeing your work from my tutorials. So yeah, as usual, I'm going to firstly start by going in with my rubber. You can use any eraser, just make sure it doesn't mark the paper. And what you want to do is just remove some of that initial outline just make those lines a little bit fainter and um, they're quite prominent at the minute so we don't really want to be seeing them underneath our drawing so yeah just go over those initial outlines to make them a little bit fainter but we can still see them so firstly i'm going to go in with the palest color that i can see which is the buff titanium luminance pencil I've used this colour as the base layer for quite a few parts of the robin, especially that branch and parts of the wing. Um, it's kind of like the perfect base layer to use when you're wanting like a creamy, like beige or brown. It's like the perfect first colour to use. So I'm just going to firstly apply this just underneath the branch and underneath the wing. I'm just going to move my camera up slightly so you can see what I'm working on. So I'm just following those feathers down, kind of shading in the same direction down the tail feather. And then I'm going to add a little bit to the outer edge here and take that up. You want to use the really flat side of your pencil. You might notice, even though mine is a stub, because I still need to do a pencil order. Um, I'm always using like the flattest side of my pencil. There's no need to go in with a really sharp pencil initially. And especially when you're drawing like out of focus things or you want in something to look slightly blurred, the flatter the surface that you're shading with, the easier you'll be able to achieve that effect because it'll give you a much softer line to shade with. We don't really want any like crisp details or really fine lines. Um, I'm going to do the same to the other side. Then on top of that, I'm going to go in with the brown ochre ten percent, which is slightly darker, still like a quite a pale, creamy colour, and just work that into like the bottom of the body, just underneath that branch. I'm using quite a light pressure, just building that colour up gradually. And then I'm going to add a little bit to the left hand side here. Maybe bring it to where we can see that initial outline. And try and hide that if we can. I mean, yours might be fine, you might not have any initial outline showing. But I think I did mine a little bit too hard, especially on the tail feather. Even when rubbing them out, you can still see them because we're using pale colours. I'm going to try and cover that as much as I can. So 
So the tail feather is made up of really like soft shapes. We can just about see them, um, but predominantly there's this creamy area at the top half and then we've got this brown area at the bottom half. Um, so with this brown ochre 10%, I'm just sort of mapping out the shapes that I can see in this brown part. And I've already shaded down to the point where the cream feathers sort of stop and the brown feathers begin. So I think I'm gonna leave that there with the uh, brown ochre 10%. I'm gonna go in with the Van Dyke Brown Polychromo and just lightly fill in the darkest area at the sort of tip of the tail feather. And I'm just doing small circular motions, constantly kind of blurring out the lines that I'm making, just so everything's completely even and soft throughout. And you want to kind of blend that with that surrounding brown ochre 10%. So those colours are sort of bleeding and merging into each other. I've gone in with quite a light pressure and it will start to pick up a lot of that grain from the paper. Um, which at this point is absolutely fine, don't let that put you off. I know I've probably mentioned this right at the start of the tutorial and it's also on my materials list um, but I'm working on the extra white hot pressed Fabriano Artistico paper and I've had a few questions recently as to whether I like the new paper or not. Basically the Fabriano paper, um, how, like the, how the grain is on the surface seems to have changed like manufacturers or something. It's just changed over the past couple of months um, and I've had a lot of questions as to what's changed and whether I prefer it or I don't like it anymore. Some people are finding it a lot harder to blend on this new sort of surface. Still feels very smooth to work on top of, um, but I think before the grain was almost more like closer together and in like a grid, which made it slightly easier to blend, whereas now it's kind of linear and a little bit more spread out. So it picks up a lot more of that grain initially, um, which can put people off, but I actually prefer it. I think, you know, once you've got your first couple of layers down and you've got over that graininess, I think it's actually quite easy to blend. Um, obviously it all comes down to personal preference and how heavy handed you are when you're drawing. But yeah, if you're someone who has used Fabriano Artistico hot press paper for a while, um, and maybe you're looking to buy some more, but you're not sure what the new batch is going to be like. Just try it out anyway, because I actually prefer it. And I think, um, you know, you need to try it out for yourself to make your own opinion, really. But I know a lot of people don't like it, but maybe just because it's different and it takes a bit of getting used to. Um, but yeah, the only papers that I would recommend that are very similar to the Fabriano paper are the Arches watercolour paper. Again, that's another hot press paper. And the Saunders Waterford, but I don't really like that one because it's it's kind of, I feel like it dulls down the pigment on the paper. I've tried both. The Archie's hot press is okay, but I think that's even more grainy and rough than this paper. Uh, the Saunders Waterford is a little bit smoother, but again, it doesn't really pick up like the brightness and the vibrancy of the colors. Um, but yeah, it's always good to try different papers and see what works for you, really. They're just my initial opinions on them. I think uh, the Hot Press Fabriano Artistico will always be my favourite. Simply because I've used it for just so many years, I've really kind of got to grips with it. So I'm trying to keep all those edges as soft as I can and kind of blend them into the next sort of shape if you will just by going over it with a lighter pressure constantly doing small circular motions just building up a bit more of that shadow and that dark kind of tip of the tail feather
a little bit up here. And a little bit just underneath that wing as well. So for more of the cream paler feathers at the top, I'm going to go in with the warm grey 3, which is quite a neutral colour, but it's just going to create a subtle shadow and start to add a bit more kind of shape and dimension to these feathers. Again, you want to kind of keep everything as soft as you can and using the flat side of your pencil. I don't know if you can see, but if you look closely at the reference photo, just underneath this branch, We've got some of these like really um, sort of frayed fine hairs from these feathers kind of falling above um, or, or below the tail feather, should I say. So they're kind of in front of what we can see of the tail feather. But I'm going to leave them till the end because they're kind of quite detailed and fine lines and the rest of it behind it is very soft. And those shapes are just sort of blurring into each other. So just kind of pretend that they're not there, if you will, at the minute. I can't believe this is the last part. I've actually enjoyed drawing this tutorial so much. I feel like it's kept us all feeling festive on the run up to Christmas. Kind of distracted us from all the, the stress. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll need to do another tutorial in the new year because I really like doing them for YouTube as well as Patreon. <clears throat> Obviously Patreon is my main teaching channel but I always like to do one or two here and there for YouTube as well throughout the year. Well hopefully more than one or two but yeah it's been a while since I've done one so it's been nice doing this one for a change. I think I'm going to leave that there with the warm grey three. We've added a little bit of neutral shadow um, so I'm just going to bring back some of those creamy tones again. I'm going to go in with the Butternut Luminance pencil. It's slightly darker than that brown ochre 10% we used before. And just work that into the creamy areas of those feathers. It's kind of like an apricot colour, like a orangey yellow, without being too vibrant. I love how I just described it as apricot coloured. I think the because it's called butternut, it got me thinking of food. I think luminance pencils as well are also just so, so good for blending. So whenever you're drawing something that's out of focus or you just want everything to look completely blended, you know, the kind of a must have pencil to be able to achieve this sort of effect just makes it so much easier to do. Work that right up to the branch. And then I'm just gonna bring that along the outer edges as well a little bit. I'm also gonna go in with the shade Nugget, which is a Faber-Castell watercolor pencil. Um, if you've got the polychromo, then feel free to use that as well. They're ex exactly the same colour. The only reason that I'm using this is because I need to do a big pencil order still. I think I've said that in every single part <laughs> until right up until the end and I've still not done it. Um, but yeah, this is literally the exact same colour as the polychromo. Um, but I'm just going to work that into the shadowy areas of the creamy coloured feathers at the top of the tail feather. This is like the perfect light brown shade. Add a 
little bit underneath that wing. Next up I'm going to go in with the dark sepia to really intensify the shadows and the dark pigment at the bottom of the tail feather. So again, kind of starting off with a medium pressure and just building that up gradually. You want to repeat those sort of small circular motions going over the same areas to really blend that with that surrounding pigment. So I'm applying a slightly harder pressure where those subtle shapes are sort of um, differentiated. But I'm also shading over that line so it's not like a crisp line that separates them. It's still very much blurred and out of focus. Gonna add a little bit up here as well, just go over that shadow to intensify it slightly.
I'm going to add a little bit of the olive brown 50% um, to these cream feathers at the top. We've used this colour quite a lot, um, especially for the wing and parts of the white feathers around here. It's got a really subtle green tint to it. So I'm just going to work that into the shadowy areas of the feathers in the top half of the tail feather. I'm going to add a little bit of the sepia 10% luminance just to remove some of the grainy areas from this dark bit of the tail feather. So just by lightly kind of working into the lightest parts of this area until you get to a point where that grainy texture is completely removed. So kind of working it into those subtle shapes. And then we'll go over it again to kind of darken that colour. So going over that again using the dark sepia polychromo. Just to dull those light sections down a little bit. Also just work into the darkest, darkest areas with the black. Again, just working that in, doing small circular motions and using it on its side to get that flat surface. I'm going to use the warm grey one briefly just to blend those outer edges kind of smudge together that like the edge of the dark pigment with those paler creamier tones on the outer edge This is quite a good like pale neutral tone just to help buff everything out. I'm just going to add a tiny little bit of the raw umber, uh, another luminance pencil. 
again it's another like earthy slightly greeny tone I'm just going to work that into those creamy coloured feathers mainly in the shadowy areas Maybe just finish off by going back in with that shade Butternut. Just bringing that into the lighter parts of the feathers. And then just going over some of those shadows to blend even more. So everything should be looking super, super blended and soft, similar to the bottom of this wing here. Um, so yeah, from a distance, it should look very much out of focus and you can't quite focus on any specific sharp lines or details because everything kind of blurs into each other and um, that's what we're going for anyway. I'm just going to use the warm grey one again just to blend this bottom a little bit, just a bit more. Really smudge those outer edges. Maybe add a little bit more of the button up just to the outer edge. like that. So I'm just going to finish off by using the craft knife slice tool and like I said just before about these tiny little feathers um, or like frayed parts of the feathers at the end that are sort of poking just underneath that branch um, underneath the tail feather. I'm just going to do some really light sort of wispy lines like fine lines going in slightly different directions like we've done with these feathers up here just along the top of that tail feather. But no more than that. So yeah, I think we're pretty much done with it. So thank you so, so much for watching all of this tutorial. Like I said, if you've stayed from the very beginning, and you've worked through each part, all seven parts, then that's amazing. Hopefully you've ended up with a really realistic um, robin piece that you're proud of and hopefully you've learned plenty of techniques on the way that you can apply to your own work. Um, as usual, I've left the full materials list, the line drawing and the reference photo in the video description below, so you should have everything that you need. Um, but if you've not or you've got any questions at all, then let me know by commenting below. If you've enjoyed the video then please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel to see more art related content, tutorials, artist vlogs and top tips. So that's all from me for this tutorial so again thank you so much for watching. Before Christmas hopefully I'll upload a Christmas vlog that I've been working on just showing you some of my behind the scenes work in my studio, what I've been up to on the run up to Christmas and yeah just like a bit of a chatty informal video about different bits, commissions, um, packaging, new equipment, I've got a new printer, um, yeah just basically little bits of everything that I've been working on on the run up to Christmas. So that should be out hopefully within the next few days before Christmas but um, yeah we'll see how we get on. But yeah if it's not up before then then I hope you all have an absolutely lovely Christmas and all the best for the new year. Thank you for watching and supporting my um, YouTube channel, I really appreciate all of your support um, every single lovely comment and you know all your work that I'm seeing it's just so rewarding and it's just so lovely to see so yeah thank you for watching and hopefully I'll be back very soon with my Christmas vlog